All right, so let's see who we got here. We got Nomad. Ooh, and we're live. There we go. Let's see. Oh, it hasn't changed yet on my end. We're still hosting uh, Miniatures Den. Luca. Luca. He's doing some cool. Oh, it's not freehand. It still looks cool, though. Did you get some new glasses? Uh, I've had these. I did. We're still not live on the Reaper page, by the way. Uh, it, hold on, it popped up for me. Yeah, this is now it is. Yeah, yeah, now it just it was just lagged. Okay. Um, no, I've had these for a while, and then I also just got another pair that are uh, rimless heart <laughs> frames. Oh. Yeah, but you know the plan is I grow the huge beard back out, and then I just wear those, and it, I think it should work pretty well. All right, buddy. All right, there we go. Now everybody's here. All right, so. Boom, there we go. What's up, Jay? Hey, looks like everybody's piling in. We're gonna wait just a minute before we get started. Today's paint job isn't too crazy. I feel like last week, of course, we were racing against time with the, uh, oops, sorry, with the triple, triple uh, painter or whatever. I don't even know what words to use, guys. I would say I haven't had enough coffee today, but I've had plenty of coffee. I actually bought some nice coffee for the first time since we moved up here. But, rainy day here right now, real dark outside. All my lights are nice and the room's not hot because <laughs> the sun's not out. Hope you guys are all having a good day. Wow, I got the... Uh... <laughs> Okay. Got a notification from the Sonic app on my phone. <laughs> That's funny. All right, hey Sharky, how are you? Hey Andre, I don't know if I said hey to you already. I don't know if you guys saw earlier today I was painting um, one of the cowboy minis. Let's see. So I've been uh, I got this stuff to play Dracula's America, which is a weird West themed, or a, or a horror themed Wild West game. You can play it as just a regular Wild West game. Um, but one of the factions is Dracula's Red Hand Coven. So painted up this guy in an hour. So this is an hour paint job right here. It's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, this is one of the uh, vampire cowboys. Yeah, world edit was there while I was painting them. And then, of course, last weekend, uh, we had our Patreon, which means this weekend I can actually breathe. Oh my gosh. I don't really like it sometimes, though, whenever the first Saturday is literally uh, the first of the month, because I feel like it cheats me out of my weekend. <laughs> but, um, where's that miniature? I had it over here. Here he is. So this is what we painted up on Patreon this weekend. Uh, one of the cyber, uh, what, I don't even know, cyber dinos, is that what you would call it? But painted up cool, like, yellow armor on him and this sort of, like, white cream-colored uh, skin and everything, but it was pretty fun. It was a nice, nice little, little Patreon shindig. Remember, you guys can always check out everything we've got going on on Patreon at patreon.com slash studio. Of course, today we are working on the Duke. I straightened out his sword and his sword says, no way, Jose, so I just didn't get it hot enough. That's my bad. Uh, you can see I did fix the sword on this guy though, so I just didn't get it warm enough. A lot of people that say they like try and do the hot water trick, but it doesn't work, I don't think are getting your miniature hot enough because you can see the difference. This was me rushing to get it ready today, and this was me you know, putting it in water that was nearly boiling, right? So do keep that in mind, because uh, today we got a little bit of a curved action sword, but um, this will be another fun paint job for us. I think we're gonna push the uh, gunmetal blue shading a lot more than I did on this version. Otherwise, relatively standard uh, paint along stuff. So go ahead and get them on our little holder here so we can get started. Uh, the one thing we're gonna start with is going to be our skeleton key. We're gonna use this for the majority of our painting today, obviously, because it's wearing lots of armor. Then we've got, uh, what else do we have? Then we've got our hero. Remember, if you did buy the kit and uh, 
yours was missing the metal mini. Just hit up help at reapermini.com and they'll send her your way in the mail. Otherwise, I know people that bought it later didn't have any issues, so yours, yours are all right. But if yours was missing, just make sure you email help at reapermini.com and they'll send it right in the mail to you. But we have her, and then we're moving on to our undead kit. If you haven't seen the undead kit, remember I've got those images uh, somewhere on my page on Facebook, so you can check that out there. Painting with dirty doll, dirty uh, water today, no big deal. Yeah, what I do is I always just microwave a mug full of water until it starts to boil, and then uh, I obviously turn the microwave off, and then uh, wait a minute until it's not boiling, and then I just kind of put the mini in, the part that's bent or whatever, and it figures itself out. All right, so now what's really nice about Skeleton Key is that you do get some good coverage with it. Some metallics have more problems than others. What I'm doing here is I'm just moving the pigment with my brush strokes to take advantage of the Zenithal a little bit, but you can see already we have a super shiny reflective surface. We're gonna do multiple coats on some of these larger surfaces just so that we get nice, even coverage so we can have fun doing our metallic shading and washing. Now then the term that we use to describe using actual metallic paints and shading them with metallic paints is called true metallic metal. That, of course, is the opposite of non-metallic metal. Do I have non-metallic metal as an example here? Yeah, I got a couple of things. So this little goblin right here is painting up on Friday, I believe. But, so like the weapon here is not done with metallic paint at all. Another example, of course, the pirate chick right here we used to, we were having fun working on the shield, right? So that's non-metallic metal. This is more true metallic metal because we're going to be shading it and highlighting it. The only real functional difference that makes for anybody is it doesn't make a functional difference at all. It's merely a matter of uh, preference. I typically like it whenever I'm trying to do something that has a lot of um, different color involved. Um, you know, I typically don't like doing non-metallic metal for things that are like very clean metal. I don't think that's very exciting. And then sometimes too, for dis you know, you, you typically see it more on display miniatures because you have much more control over, uh, you know, the the actual lighting, reflections, things like that. Some people will argue that, you know, oh, you have you have less control because if you look at the miniature from the wrong angle, the reflections don't make sense. That's completely not true. <laughs> that just means if if you're experiencing that, that just means the way you painted it wasn't really correct, right? Like. You should always be doing metal and metallic reflections and highlights and stuff if you're doing non-metallic metal that actually makes sense with the miniature and where your light source is coming from. It doesn't matter what angle you view it from, it's always believable. The same can be said with what we're doing today. If we applied our highlights in really weird ways, they obviously wouldn't look correct at all. They would look really weird. So we're going to be doing that today, and I think it's something that's good for people to practice. on her adventure to your castle are right chewy well, that's good everybody's got until next monday if you're painting live otherwise you know no biggie all right so i'm just gonna wait a little bit to coat again i guess we have to do the feet huh it's probably probably a smart idea Let's do, do that bottom part there, and we'll do the handle, we'll do the rest in dragon bronze. All right, so that should be dry. I'm gonna go ahead and double coat the front of the shield. Don't 
don't worry too much down towards the bottom of the shield if you don't have perfect coverage it's okay we have, we have all the time in the world to make that a really nice beautiful gradient once we get there the unfortunate unfortunate bendable sword here i guess i'll do the interior bit Wah, 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 wah. <laughs> what if I told you this was the metal version of the miniature? That'd be crazy. But you paint with your mind, that's funny. Yeah, I know, I'm relatively quick. It makes it hard for people to catch up. But I will say, uh, all of the people that are on Patreon eventually catch up to speed where they can paint with me one-to-one. -one. What's funny too is some of the people on Patreon will say, um, like they're able to guess my next move eventually depending on what colors i'm using so i think that's always a good sign for people too that are interested i have been asking everybody um if they are so inclined uh if they want to leave feedback a testimonial a positive review whatever um i'm actually putting those up on my website so if you're interested in doing something like that that'd be a big help for me as i release the hobby at home classes That'll be online, minipainting.studio. But you can send that. You can either click the uh, send me a message button on my website, or you can just email me directly at, mini, or at josh at minipainting.studio. I've already had some testimonials sent, and with images of people's work, and I'm putting those on the website as well. So that'd be a big help if you've been enjoying Miniature Monday, anything like that. That is a big, 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 big thank you, helpful thing for me. So did the first two kits and then recreated the Sistine Chapel from Josh's teachings. Thanks, Justin. I'm just saying. Thanks, Justin. Oh, can people even hear you today? Let me see. I have my volume turned out of my ears. Well, it looks like they can because they left. Let's see. Can you can you hear Justin today? I think they can uh, based on Sharky's reaction, but... Okay, cool. All right. Yeah, see, we roll that it needs the same ones. See, to be fair, Josh holds back the insanely good stuff for just me. <laughs> That's hilarious. Here, we can we can adjust. Uh, we can adjust Justin. There you go. Now Justin will be louder. There you go, guys. Um, or I don't know if he'll be louder per se. Here, hold on. I know how to do it. We figured. We it took us a while to figure it out. All right. So now when Justin talks, he'll be a lot louder. Testing. I think. Did that did that help? Let me know, guys. <laughs> I adjusted the volume here. Much better. Oh, there we go. Cool. Well, we always run into the same issue of uh, Discord being like so weirdly quiet. But all right, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna grab gunmetal blue here. Let me move my Vortex mixer, it's freaking out on me. There we go. Yeah, the game that I have to play is quieting the music, but also then increasing the, the default volume coming in, so then that way he's loud. There we go. All right, so first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make a wash out of this. And I remember we did this last time with the Red Bull. So I'm just taking it over here to the palette. And I'm looking for that flubber consistency, which you can see we got right there. Looking really nice. And I'm gonna apply this all over the surfaces on the miniature. At least uh, on the metal bits that we've painted so far. Now, remember too, we sort of discussed it last time. Whenever you're using a metallic for a wash, um, you're actually not dulling down the color beneath it, so you can get some really, really brilliant colors in terms of shininess. Just 
Don't be afraid to go heavy-handed here either, obviously, because we can just get back with that gun or uh, skeleton key. It's not say gun metal is what we're using. Pulling the brush down so that way the pigment flows that direction. Even though we are just going for a heavier wash currently. And I'm just bouncing all over the miniature, making sure we've got good amounts. And then what I'm going to do is just let everything hang out and dry for a second. I don't get any tea staining, just moving the pigment around. Then the next application we're going to do is not really a wash, but we're going to be layering the darker color in to the shadows, and then we'll just highlight things. Exciting, I know. Exciting, I know. On Wednesday last week, we did more work on this big old demon boy. This is the big king of hell miniature available in the bones range, but we spent all of our time, well, we started the skin in general. But we spent most of our time doing the volume shot or volume uh, reflections here on the abs on that left hand side. So you can see how they're curved. Those highlights are baked in. And what's cool about the red skin too is that we're not uh, using any red paint, of course. This is auburn shadow and rust brown, which I think is pretty cool. Let's kind of play a trick like that. So I'm thinking now we're closer to dry paint here, and we are very, very close. I can cheat a little bit using my airbrush, which I guess now, from what I saw, right, they're going to be giving away uh, airbrushes, the Reaper airbrushes, on Thursday. That's pretty cool. Hopefully you guys can be uh, lucky in winning that. Awesome. Okay, looks like we're dry everywhere that I would want it to be dry currently. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my airbrush away. All right, so. Oops, there we go. All right, let me move my palette here. There was the camera. So I just have this kind of in our regular one-to-one. -one. Um, well, to be fair, Skies, uh, you would have to spend money Obviously, if you won, because airbrushes don't just work on their own. So you would need to buy a compressor, you need to buy a cleaner, a cleaning kit, all the other stuff involved. Um, but the airbrush itself would be free. And you get it before anybody else, so that's pretty exciting. But airbrushing is great. It's just another tool that you can use to achieve all kinds of cool effects. I would say you can do the uh, majority of painting without using an airbrush, but there are things that you can't do without using an airbrush. So, you know, a bit of a give and take. So now what I'm doing in the areas where this wash has dried a little bit more uh, opaquely, I'm going into the shadows and layering in more of our gunmetal. Now the sword we're gonna do, or not the sword, but the shield, we're gonna do a little bit more work. So really I'm focusing on just kind of these areas in between the plates, 
that have more in the recesses, things like that. I'm just going in with it. You can see everything's still super, super shiny. Yeah, yeah, one thing you can't do without an airbrush is airbrush. Yeah, exactly. That is technically correct. But I guess uh, they're going to be for sale during ReaperCons. That's very cool. Which is, which is interesting too, right? Because I know they had um, some of them, uh, or they had one, I suppose, last year at ReaperCon that uh, people were playing around with. So that's pretty cool. Finally see it happen. At ReaperCon again, which is a neat little cycle. I'm excited because I've got, um, I've, I've been finishing up and um, I've been finishing up the Shadow Dragon with the green stuff that we needed and all that. And that'll be one of my entries for whatever painting contest exists for ReaperCon line or whatever. And then I had another piece show up today that I would love to complete and enter. I think it's so beautiful but it's from an artist in uh, Paris. Not a miniature sculptor either, so it's definitely um, kind of a sleeper, sleeper entry. But that showed up today, so I'm super excited. All right, so now you can see we have this cool sort of oil slick reflection going on. And taking our one-to-one -one ratio metallic here, I'm gonna be pulling down towards the bottom of the shield like this, tapering it towards that middle edge. You can see how dark it gets in the shadow. That's what I'm doing right now. And I'm gonna go ahead and follow the natural shadow that we've built up with the wash that kind of creates this S curve, just because I think it looks really cool. Subscribe for two months with Twitch Prime. Thank you very much. Make sure you guys subscribe for free using your Amazon Prime account if you've got one by hitting that sub button and you can link it to your Amazon Prime. And if you don't use Amazon at all, guess what? You can still subscribe. You can still throw some support our way by hitting the same button and following the instructions. I know uh, last week I did gift subs, which funny is I don't subscribe to anybody personally, but what I, I do is I go in and I just do gift subs to people. Mostly because I'm, I'm, I'm not like on Twitch to enjoy content. So I'd rather let the people that are watching get a free sub, things like that. Going back in, I'm going to be applying more right here. So you can see the nice reflection pattern that we're getting here on the shield. Really, really shiny. I'm gonna go ahead and put some more. And then I'm gonna go back into some of these broader shadow areas with even more. I wanna get as pure gunmetal as I can in the darkest areas before we go in and do any uh, other pigment work. We will go back in with uh, a dark color here in just a second. Cause I wanna go darker than we did to create more contrast than um, the first time I painted the mini. Oh, thanks for the ray miniatures, Dan. How you doing? Hey, what's up, Luca? You know, what's funny is Luke is actually not real, so it's an experimental AI. And honestly, I think the developers are doing a great job, you know? No one, no, no one could tell the difference. He does seem to be a paint machine, doesn't he? Uh, yeah, you know. It happens. <laughs> 
So, all right, we're building up that cool interaction between the gunmetal color and the skeleton key color. Well, it's an AI that runs off oil. In order to get the TARS to process oil, he has to smoke. That's like the idea, right? It's kind of like Bender, but different if you've watched Futurama. So, I'm gonna take uh, Noir Black, as we always do. I'm gonna mix it in a little bit. into our metallic glaze here. I just did a brush full, or a brush tip, sorry. And taking it into our darkest areas yet again. I'm gonna keep building up this cool kind of S curve. I'm going and grabbing some water, getting that flubber consistency that we used for the wash, but instead using it to taper into the shadow. You can always glaze with metallic paint as long as you're working with metallic paint. So, you know, if you've like washed a bunch of rust onto something, anything like that, you're, you're really not gonna get a good result. But you can see this very subtle, awesome shade that we're building up slowly here on the shield. Anytime I look at a miniature while I'm painting it, I always think what's kind of its most prominent feature. And other than uh, Mr. Bendy Sword, obviously, the main focus on this guy would be this cool shield. So that's why I'm kind of trying to draw the most attention to it, add the most contrast to it. I am gonna go right down the right hand side of the center edge, just like that. I wanna accentuate that shadow edge just a little bit more. So, um, Karakis, I don't, uh, any, any word that I'm using, so like wash or glaze or whatever, I'm using it like a verb. So I don't use any products, I only use water. So now I'm gonna add a little bit more of our Noir Black to the gun metal. Add a little bit more water. There we go, so we're at a good consistency here. And we go right down to the bottom. You can see how dark we're getting at the very bottom. So last time, right, we were working with shaded metals on the Red Bull. Now we're working with shaded metals on this guy. Unfortunately, the Hero miniature just doesn't really have anything for us to do that with. But I figured, hey, let's let's get as much utility out of these two as we can with some techniques we don't typically use. And since it is the mechanical dungeon, it kind of made sense to me. And I'm, I'm trying to remember too, is the, I know the undead kit, uh, there's glowing eyes. I can't remember if we've ever intentionally included glowing eyes in a kit yet, or if it's always just been like a on stream meme type of thing. But I, I know we've got that to look forward to, but otherwise the undead kit is just a good, uh, good throwdown of some sort of more neutral colors to get your undeady stuff more deady. And I'm gonna go back through here and just apply this in the deepest shadow areas again. I mean, I'm just following the same recipe and format as with everything else. The fungoids always had glowing eyes. Ah, okay, Deagle, so they're not first. The fungoids were some fun guys, that's for sure. All right, so I'm very happy with the shield. I think that reflection looks sick. Definitely really cool. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back with our skeleton key. Actually, I'm gonna get brand new skeleton key. I don't like uh, using metals that have kind of sat on a palette like that. Boom, boom, boom. All right. There we go. Now we got fresh. All right. So, now I'm just gonna go around the edges. Pick all of the brightness back up. Just like that, you can see. Nice and shiny. Just using the side of the brush, real easy peasy. Got a little bit too much there, so I just wiped it off. There we go. 
when in doubt, smudge it out. That's what my grandma used to say, right? What does that even mean, Justin? What does that even mean? I don't know. How dare you disrespect her? Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> All right, make sure you get our little rivets here. So riveting, right? Am I right? Am I right? Okay. <laughs> All right. Now then, go ahead and do the, the easy bit. So we'll start on the back of the neck. Obviously, we got a very bright spot here. Highlight that up. And then we'll do the left and right corner of the other back piece. Plate, I should say. And just create a nice little reflection there. Then I want to reflect this center portion up in the corner. And then just the edge. Same here. Just the edge. You can see we're just really trying to create as much. Smudge it is when you burn sage. Oh, that is true. Get no bad vibes. Get rid of the negative energy. Charge your crystals under a full moon, everybody. All right. Do the other plates. Same section here. I'm highlighting up that bottom corner. So that way we create more of a dark shadow on the top, dark shadow on the bottom, just to show that it's a curved surface. Then up on the collar, top of the collar, bottom of the collar. Down the center of the bottom of the chest plate where his abs would be. And then the bottom of his pectorals easy peasy yes so this is this is what you would call true metallic metal since we're shading with metal paint to make it look how metal things look i don't know dumb terminology but it makes sense eventually so now on the sword i'm just kind of looking at the little bit of the shaded pattern that we have there i'm going to make a glaze out of our skeleton key here. I'm just gonna kind of focus in towards the very base of the sword, tapering into that first shadow. I'm gonna create another highlight on the opposite side of that shadow right here, and then the very tip of the blade. So I have three areas where I place that back to create a nice little variance. What size brush? So I only use a size one brush. I only ever use one kind of brush ever. Actually, we're gonna... Yeah, I'm actually gonna work on this sword more. So I'm just gonna very solidly actually put in paint here. And then we're gonna glaze it down. That'll be much easier than trying to highlight back on top with the metal. So I have these three sections really bright here on the uh, hilt edge sort of a little bit off center in the middle and then the very end of the blade. So I'm gonna be going back, I'm gonna get more gunmetal out just to kind of gently work that color back in. Hey, thank you for the gift sub. Let's see. Hey, Marilyn, how you doing? All right, so I'm gonna be glazing this on top. Actually, I need to add a little bit of water. There we go. And I'm just gonna be focusing it in to where we wanna build that shadow. So you can see me doing that here. Same technique that we did on the sword. Or sorry, on the shield. Why did I say sword? Why did I say sword? Building it in slowly. We're gonna let that dry.
building it back in. Like so. And I love it too, when you're working with metallics on metallics that you haven't washed down traditionally, when everything reflects, it's still super bright. And then you're actually seeing sort of our forceful shading um, anywhere that we wouldn't be hitting a direct reflection. But I mean, the shield's looking pretty epic. The sword, eh, I mean, it's all right, we'll get there. We'll get there. I'm not too worried, we'll get there. A little bit more love on the shield. Or sorry, sword, oh my gosh. Somebody saved me with the S words today. with that. So now we can start working on everything else on the miniature for now. If anything's sort of out of whack, anything doesn't make sense, we'll go back and work on it. Now I'm going to take our dragon bronze. We can start base coating all of our little accents on the miniature. Dragon bronze, of course, is a awesome color. I really like it because it's kind of like a, a greenish tint. And you can see that pretty prominently here. Uh, on this paint job, a lot of this is dragon bronze. On a, on a dragon, isn't that crazy? Wow, go figure. Wow. But, and then a bunch of Reaper clear paint, of course, to make all the extra boo-boo shadows. That is the technical term, a boo-boo shadow. So I'm gonna grab some of the dragon bronze. And we're just gonna layer it into all the little areas that we haven't touched yet that would be metal. See his second sword. You know, I'm kind of confused as to why he's got two big old dang swords. Maybe one steel, one silver. I don't know. Oh, wait, are we getting Witcher vibes from the sculpt? I don't know. I don't know. But do the Templar symbol here. I'm sorry, Crusader symbol. It is a warlord faction. Oh, he didn't have to reload the sword. Of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, for I forgot about those uh, sword reloads, man, for sure. So then on the uh, wrist here, that wrist we can't really see, correct, correct. And then the chest here, he's got an Aquila, just kidding, just kidding. But we do have wings. I'm gonna bend this sword out of the way. Let's do the symbol here. And on that side, eh, underneath the shield, do the best you can. Believe in yourself, and you'll be alright. Let's do the bell buckle. Boom. Alright, so now we gotta make a wash for all this. Uh, what model is this? It's uh, Duke uh, Gerard, I believe. 
I don't really remember the miniature names out of the kits. It's usually been a while. Oh, it looks like I was right, according to Nomad. I remember more of the paint names than I do the miniature names. Oh, where's my drink? I'm gonna, I've got, got our typical heartburn magic happening. So let's grab, we're gonna do two things here. We're gonna be a little bit sneaky. So we're gonna grab Ruby Red, which of course is our red metallic. Oop, that needs to be Vortex. And then I'm gonna add just a touch of Noir Black to that. Let's make a nice deep red wash. There we go. That may be too thin. I may need to go back and edit that further. Let's see, I need more of the Ruby. Where you at, Ruby? There we go. Put it over here on the dry part of the palette. All right, there we go. And then I'm just gonna wash this on top of the metallic bits. Or the gold bits, duh. Duh. What's interesting too is washing with ruby red is intriguing because it's kind of, it kind of reminds me of Succubus Kiss, weirdly enough, when you apply it as a wash. Was what color wild? Uh, wild West Rose is the, it's super, super bright. Super, super bright color. We're gonna be using it for the skin, most likely. And over this symbol. All right, so we're gonna let that dry before we highlight that stuff back up. It's definitely more like purple, I would say. It's kind of interesting how that happened, but I think that's the, whatever pigment is in Noir Black. I think Noir Black probably has uh, some blue in it, maybe, if I had to guess. Um, somebody could probably ask Anne tomorrow and be like, hey, is there anything other than white and black in Noir Black? So. Um, how long do you wait until applying a wash over a color? Uh, well, you pretty much should know. Like, if it, if it looks wet, then you don't apply it. Um, for me, everything that I do, because I don't apply a ton of paint at, at all, it dries really quickly. 
All right, so looking at our, our mini here, we've got a couple areas to do more shading compared to our painted version here. Some highlights, and then we just have LED blue and his skin. So let's see, we'll do the, we can base the LED blue in. Now that if you have LED blue at home, make sure you're really shaking it to make sure you get good coverage. That's kind of an issue I ran into myself. I'm vortexing mine really well. If you don't have a vortex mixture, just uh, really slam yours a lot to make sure you'll be good. I'm gonna change my palette land here. There we go. So I'm gonna get a, little, get a pretty, pretty sizable amount of LED blue out here. And then taking a slight amount of Noir Black, it's actually probably too much for, yeah, that's way too much. This pigment is super weak in LED blue. There we go. So we're just making a sort of middle bluish gray. Wow, my palette cam is totally wrong right now. There we go. It went super cool tone on us. Sorry about that. There's the actual color. That's funny. That's funny. Yeah, the vortex is great. All right, so now I'm just gonna put it in. Wow, there's so much LED blue, there we go. So I'm just doing a nice even coat there. Remember, you can see the vortex mixer that I use and all of the other things that I use every day while painting. If you do exclamation point Josh's things with an apostrophe S, you can see my Amazon page there. Remember too, you can always kick me a few extra pennies without any cost to you. If you do shop on Amazon, you can just go through that Amazon link directly before you buy whatever you want to buy. And they will say, here are two pennies. Thank you, Nomad. Vortexes are quite pricey for what they are. No, they're not. They're industrial. So the difference between like a nail polish shaker and lab equipment is that lab equipment are tested, right, the motors in them to be used tens to hundreds of thousands of whatever you would call it, gyrations, I don't know. I would like to imagine the word is, the term is gyration. But you're buying like, you know, industrial scientific equipment when you buy a Vortex mixer. But you can always go cheap and you can buy like a $30 nail polish mixer, that's fine. They will eventually break. And by eventually, I mean relatively faster than if you're buying a Vortex mixer. Like the Vortex mixer that I have, I bought has a lifetime warranty, right? So, and I'm not gonna like drop it or anything. It's pretty, pretty solid on the table. All right, so making sure I just have nice, even coverage, and I do. I'm not too concerned with the uh, interior portion there because we're just gonna go darker. So I'm gonna add a little bit more Noir black into the mix here. Eh, where I need more. There we go. And I'm getting that somewhere in between a glaze and a wash. No idea to do with your cases. Take them to your uh, local hobby store and just let them give them to people as free paint cases. It's always a good option, since they do hold paints. All right, I'm gonna get a little bit more Noir Black out here. It's just not exactly where I want it to be. There we go, that's what I'm looking for. You want just a nice dark gray.
The unfortunate trick about LED blue is that you can't go too, too dark. LED gray, LED blue, I don't know. One of those painting days. I'm actually gonna flip to the front because that section right there is also dry. So we're gonna do the underside of the cloak here. Still waiting for that to dry just a little bit. We could probably be okay, I'll see. I'll just hide. Any reactivation of paint, there we go. the miniature. All right, we're just waiting on that to dry. We can go ahead and start layering up. I think I can almost there. Yeah. So why don't we go ahead and start the skin? Or, well, actually, we're gonna we're gonna do a couple things. That should be pretty simple. I'm gonna go ahead and get out intense intense brown. Painter's choice if you don't have the uh, core colors. But any old brown will do. We'll go ahead and do the bags, belts, straps, anything he's got where we can use some brown. On the, on the front, I think that means nothing. Yeah, he's got like nothing going on in the front. In the back though, we've got a bag, a little satchel deal. We've got the straps on the secondary sword. It just uh, like that. Cool, cool beans. Alright, then I'm going to take this color and a little bit of the Wild West Rose. Wild West... <laughs> Wild West Rose is a really good mid-tone if you are trying to do fair skin or anything like that. It works really, really well to build up on. But what I'm doing is I'm making... Oop, if you can actually see, I'm making a 50-50 mix of that and intense brown. I'm gonna use this to base coat the face. A nice sort of middle tannish tone. Nice rich skin tone. And we're just gonna be adding white as we move our way up. Make sure you get good coverage there. And then what I'll do is I'll go ahead and just take our intense brown directly and uh, paint the hair. Sometimes I wonder why I say things like, and then we're gonna paint the hair, right? I mean, obviously we're painting it. I feel like there's only so much of a vocab that we can use for painting. All right. So you should have a really rich, warm skin tone hanging out. Should you make pancakes for dinner? Hmm. You should make jerk chicken in pancakes. Do you use Kodiak cakes? Have you ever had the Kodiak cakes mix? It's really good. I have, actually, I love it. Um, have you ever uh, had the alternate flavors that they do? So like the... Um, chocolate one, or whatever. We bought the chocolate one. It's really good. I think I have the, the power cakes. Mm. Yeah, it's hard to tell when the chocolate ones were finished, though, because they're just so dark. Yeah, it's like, I think that's... The, oh, no, that's just burnt. Never mind. Yeah. And then you cut into it, and you're like, oh, it's full of pudding. Yay. <laughs> Yum. All right, so now I'm taking that sort of middle gray color that we did here.
And we're just gonna start layering it back up for a highlight. Yeah, I'm making a uh, chicken asada for dinner. I've got the chicken marinating and then a fresh made ancho chili paste that I made earlier today. A bunch of lime, everything like that. And we're gonna put it on the charcoal grill and have a delicious din din. And then last night, I just bought a, char a cheap, cheap charcoal grill. So I'm trying to use it as much as I can just to get it out of my system. But, and then last night what I did is I did a uh, uh, drunken garlic noodle, but I did strip steak and marinated that in that uh, marinade. That marinade's awesome though, because it's a uh, garlic, a very spicy garlic black bean marinade, and it's really good. And then I added Szechuan peppercorn uh, powder into it and a bunch of ginger and everything like that. And it was, oh, a bunch of uh, hoisin sauce and uh, it was delicious. And then we had that on top of um, some ramen noodles and uh, stir fried veggies. So that was a pretty good dinner. Pretty, pretty good. All right. <laughs> of course, you just had cheese trash. I mean, I don't blame you. Sydney and I will do a thing where usually once a week. We haven't done it in a while, but... Um, and by a while, I mean like a week. But usually, like Fridays or just some night where we don't want to do anything too crazy, we'll do uh, a charcuterie din-din. So we'll have um, a bunch of different meats. Usually it's like the... Aldi has like a three pack of prosciutto, salami, and some other kind of, it's like two kinds of salami and a prosciutto. And um, so we'll get that and then we do goat cheese and then uh, I'll make little like toasts out of whatever bread we can find, usually French bread. And uh, we'll have some balsamic and then we'll have different um, jams and stuff. So I, I have like at Aldi, we got this jam pack that had, it's like mimosa. Um, it's like all different cocktails but in little jellies and jams and so we'll do that for dinner it's usually really good it's one of our favorite little favorite little things that we do and then we usually watch something not amazing like we'll, we'll just pick something brainless to kind of sit and watch while we eat that but macaroni and gravy whoa whoa so now i'm taking led blue directly and uh, I'm gonna make sure I've got that one-to-one -one ratio. Make sure the layering's easy peasies. There we go. Now it's gonna look way more blue because the palette can decided to white balance the heck out of it. But I'm gonna layer this for our final highlight here on his, his little capey wapey, his little skirty wordy. Highlighting up here. The Undead Kit. That's the next kit that's coming out. You can see all the miniatures that are in it uh, on my Facebook page. If you look through, I don't know, look back a few days into last week, you'll see the shared image. I typically always promo the next month's kit once the next month's kit comes out. I think that sentence makes sense, but I always let you know what's, what's coming whenever uh, we start a new kit, so that way you get excited immediately. We've got some cool ones in the works, man. 
Justin, what do you think about the Reapercon themed kit? Does it look cool? Uh, from what little I've seen, <laughs> um, because Collins hasn't showed me. Oh, wait, I sent the photo in the chat. What are you talking about? <laughs> Oh, did you really? Yes, hold on. I'm sending it to you right now. <laughs> please, please do. I guess I missed it. Yeah, there was a lot of, I well. Gonna, I was gonna say the stuff I did see looked really cool. But yeah, well, there was. Like I'm getting spoiled. Yeah, no, we, we had a lot of typing back and forth last week. That probably explains it. Hold on, here it is right here. Tell, tell me what, what you think about this. Now, I went above and beyond on this kit because it's special. All right, I sent it to you on Facebook. Um, strange. You can go on the Reaper website and just type Monday in the search bar. Oh yes, this is fantastic. I love it. I love, <laughs> I love the basing too, especially. Yeah, the, the queso. <laughs> love it. Yes, the queso discussion. I remember. Okay, never mind. I remember now. But yeah, I'm definitely happy with that kit. I think that's probably one of the better ones. I think I said it looked tasty. And yes. Said it's uh, <laughs> sand and baking soda. Yeah, and I was like, mmm, still sounds good. Yeah. All right, so we got that knocked. So what I'm gonna do is make a little bit of a, a dark wash here using Noir Black and whatever color I have in front of me. There we go. We'll, use, we'll mix in some Wild West Wild West Rose and some intense brown. There we go. And we'll wash down our brown accents. Maybe show it on stream for a second. No. Well, maybe I can show. Do you, Justin? Do you think I should show the green things or the teal thing? My favorite's the teal thing by far. So I would go with the. the I love the contrast and the color. It's very pretty. All right. So drop a drop a teal in the chat if you guys think we should see the teal thing, and that's all you get. That's all you get. You gotta wait until the next kit comes out before you're allowed to see the rest. But drop teal in the chat if you want to see the teal thing and we'll leave you with a little present. That's a lot of teals. Teal, 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 teal. Shark truth. Thank you, Sharky. Uh, leave it to Sharky. Well, guys, Sharky ruined it for us, so we're not going to show it, but uh, no, I'm kidding. All right, give me a second. Where are they? And they're across the world. Oh, I'll grab the undead kit since people are asking. <laughs> okay. Oh, 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 nope. Oh, 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 there we go. Oh, come on. Okay. <laughs> you guys saw what was happening right now. I can't. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, what is, okay, all right. <laughs> I just had a bunch of frames fall over, that was cool. And then I'm stuck on my rug. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, you guys. I'm fine, I just had stuff fall. <sighs> all right, people. Oh, that's Good great. Lord. Good lord, the things I go through for promo. All right, so uh, we'll start with the undead kit. Hold on, let me put my headphones on. <laughs> oh my gosh, guys. I hope I didn't break uh, any of the glass in those frames. Okay, undead kit. So uh, NPC, boom. Hero, boom. Awesome, awesome. A lot of fun, a lot of fun. Now then, this wasn't included in the image because how do I show it? But we do get to paint... Um, the tomb included with our undead lord. Woo. And then of course, big boy. <sighs> it's crazy, it's crazy. <sighs> so, um, then. Those eyes look great. I love that. There's the teal thing. And there you go. Perfect, guys. There you go. All right, fine, here. You guys ready to paint this? What do you guys think about that? Love it. And uh, to answer the question, uh, who, who was it that? Chewy Boots. Um, it's not a Murloc for IP's sake. That is not a Murloc. <laughs> do you like the eyes? 
They're pretty insane. I do. Uh, they're, yeah. Ah! Absolutely crazy. Yeah, I thought about doing big pupil, and I was like, nah. Nah. All right, but anyway, that's that's the only teaser you get for the ReaperCon kit. And actually, like the rest of the kit, too, everybody's going to freak out about that as well. But, all right. I forgot to wash down the hair, so let's go ahead and do that. We're almost done with this guy. Finish the hair, highlight the accessories, highlight his face, and bye bye Yeah, I will warn everybody at least for the, um... Sadly, no way to get Reaper stuff in Poland. You can, I mean, can you not order it through the UK store? There's a UK store. Right? Unless you just can't get stuff from the UK and Poland. But you should be able to. Alright. Now then, I need... Just regular old intense brown for a highlight. Let's go to the new section. Okay, every time, man. Every time. I knock this off. And I think I've fixed it. What I need to do is bend it like this. Bend it like this. <laughs> Just ignore this camera. Ignore this camera. Don't look at this one. Don't look at this one. Stop. There we go. All right. New palette land. There we go. All right. Regular old intense brown. Yeah, there's a UK hub. Um, whenever you go to the Reaper, the main Reaper website, it asks you where you are. And then just tell it where you are. Yeah, in theory, I would think that the shipping from the UK would be easier to get it to Poland. I would hope. Oh, yeah, PSA for everyone in chat. We have a UK store, guys. Um, <laughs> you just switch the... I think when you get to the site, if it doesn't already ask you which it should you can switch it i think it's on the top left or the top right yeah just choose the uk option and then uh, now the stocks aren't always as good because there's a bit of a a lag time to get stuff over there we are sending kits over there for miniature monday absolutely um they just have to go by boat so it slowed the entire thing down yep it just takes a while and eventually we'll be caught up to where everyone should be able to get the product at the exact same time. And that should probably be, well, uh, what? Two kits, I guess, I suppose. But we'll get there. It's only taken six months, <laughs> seven months. No big deal. We'll figure it out. Lot, a lot of logistical things. All right. So now then, I'm gonna take Wild West Rose directly. It's a little bit dirty, but use this to start highlighting up the face. From the slow boat to London. It's more of a robo and it's just Justin. They sent him once every two months and he goes by whale back. It takes a hot minute guys, yeah. They give him a satellite internet connection and he runs the streams from the back of a boat. I prefer to go by humpback. A little bit roomier. A little bit roomier, yeah. All right, I'm just following the major facial features here. I'm gonna get out some white so we can continue highlighting up the skin. I mean, there it is, all right, that's how I'd say where to go. It's way too hard, yeah. If I really wanna get there quick, I'll take an orca. An those, orca. those guys are rough. Wow. They're like the lift of the ocean. You can't get the Uber, <laughs> you gotta get the orca. Yep. That's funny. All 
I travel by pelican. All right. Flying kangaroos. So I've added a little bit of white here. Following the top of the brow line, the hairline, right up underneath the eye, going from the side of the nose down to the edge of the mouth. Top of the nose to you, Andre, if you're watching. Can't have a stream without shouting out Andre. Side of the nose, right up underneath the eye. Hey, hey there he is. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think we're allowed to have a miniature Monday without a top of the whatever joke. I think that's now solidified. Thank you, Trash. That's perfect. It's canon. Yes, it is. It is canon. All right. So now, adding much more white. To get to really, I mean, this is really a rosy, rosy pink, but it should work in comparison to the warm brown. Mini Maven, you're late. I'm going to need a note from the office or you are in trouble. time when I was growing up um, somebody was late walking into like first period or whatever in high school <laughs> and the teacher like the teacher was really cool but I forget what had been going on at the school like kids were sneaking out too much at lunch or whatever the deal was and so they like had this stringent rule of like making sure you had notes for everything right and um, what's funny is uh, so this kid shows up late and she's like all right well I'm sorry, but you have to, you gotta go to the office, you know? And I mean, like, you were in trouble type of thing. It wasn't like, like you, were, you were getting in trouble for not getting these notes. And I, I'll never forget, uh, the guy's name was Devin. He just like stops and he goes, my mom had a bad morning, all right? I'm not going to the office. And he sits down <laughs> and my teacher goes, fair enough. All right, let's go ahead and get our workbooks out. And I was just like, wow, okay, I respect that. <laughs> I respect that a lot. My mom just had a bad morning, all right? Give me a break. All right, I'm gonna do one more little highlight on the face. I'm gonna call it good on the skin. Top of the bridge of the nose, top of the ball of the nose, top of the cheek, top of the ear. Top of the lip, top of the nostril, top of the bottom lip, boom. There we are. Now that I may want to shade down the hair a little bit more, I think I'm just gonna do some implied highlights uh, by highlighting up the intense brown. We'll just kind of cheat and highlight it that way. There we go. Boom. That'll work for us. Oh, you know what? We gotta figure out a color for the sheath. Uh, I'm gonna take new copper. We could have used new copper this whole time, by the way. Great color for skin. <laughs> but I figured we'd use it next time because we're using Wild West Rose for uh, her clothing. So I'm gonna take new copper. New copper. And uh, I'm gonna coat the sheath and we're gonna paint it orange so that should be simple enough for all of us we're actually gonna cheat in the way that we paint it but don't worry about it yet we're just gonna glaze it orange but we're gonna use new copper make sure it's nice and solid coverage on the top here bottom doesn't matter as much we of course just gonna apply a wash like true champions
Look that dry. Yeah, 90% of all administrative stuff is so pointless. What's amazing too, like I didn't understand until I taught myself. And um, it's amazing that like the people that run schools, nine times out of 10 have no teaching experience. <laughs> so, or, or they have like one year teaching experience and then they went back to grad school and uh, then they come back to be like a principal, vice principal, whatever. It's never those 20 year teachers that are running schools. All right, so I'm applying this as a wash on top. This is just intense brown. And I'm just tapering it away from that top edge so it's a little bit brighter, just like that. And then when that dries, we're gonna make a glaze out of lava orange. This, of course, was our rust color. That we used last week. And yeah, you can see it right there. I'm just gonna make a bit of a glazy by just pulling it with a brush full of water. I know it'll be the right consistency. And boom, glaze it on top. And I think I'm gonna apply another wash once this is dry, actually. But that's the easiest way for you to get like immediate uh, coverage with a yellow or an orange, anything like that. <laughs> Clavicus, that's a great, great answer. It's very true. There was nothing better than professional development days where they like have you read some like article written by another administrator that's like, hey, um, don't punish kids for doing X, Y, Z. And then they're like, all right, anybody want to talk about what we just read? And all the teachers are like, yeah, that's trash. You should feel bad for making us hear, <laughs> listen to that. They're like, oh, okay. I just thought it was cool. I read it in, in Principal Monthly. All right, I'm gonna highlight this up actually a little bit using a Wild West Rose and some orange and just go down the top edge, just like that. Boom, all righty. So, All right, that is it for today. Uh, I definitely love the shield. I think the shield is killer. That's probably some of the happier uh, true metallic metal stuff I've done. I just like the fact that we have that like very gentle organic curve going on. Very, very rad. Skin's looking good. Everything's looking good. So of course, next time, next Monday, we're painting what's her name, Thistlemore. I do remember her last name. So we're painting her up, and that will be the end of this kit as we move on to the Undead Kit. Ooh, Undead Kit. Even though it's more like awesome Crusaders smashing Undead Things kit. But uh, beyond that, we've got uh, all of the other shows coming up. Do you have anything new and exciting for us, Justin? Uh, no, we have a test stream coming uh, Wednesday with Luca, actually at 3 p.m. Um, we're kind of testing out some, some possible... Uh, European markets with our time zones and such so should be should be fun I would say um, as long as of course I don't derail it and become boring but uh, you know that that's interesting. outside of that no it's the same old uh, same old schedule and same what is it the same same bad time the same bad place something like that? I don't, I don't uh, yeah like that. same Justin show same Justin channel Perfect. There we go. Yeah. yeah. So we'll go with that. Why not? <laughs> Outside of that, though, that's it. Sweet. Alrighty, guys. Uh, do we have a raid lined up? Yes. Let's see here. Hmm. Longest raid pause of all time. <laughs> 
That's because the one I had selected uh, went offline, which does happen. Mm. But, so, here we are again, back to the uh, drawing board. Back to the drawing board. Um, can we do... Darn you. <laughs> I hate it when I'm like, let's see who to raid. And then it's like, you have to watch a 45 second ad. <laughs> Tell me about it. Oh my gosh. Um, man, too bad Mocha's not on. She was, she's was. she been our like sort of go-to recently. Uh, what about Giggling Geekette? Or I'm wondering if there's somebody, hold on, I'm looking to see, I'm, I'm looking to see if there's somebody that doesn't really have an audience right now. Uh, mm, what about Key Lime Prime? Let's do that. Let's do Key Lime Prime. Let's dump a big old party on this guy. Make sure when you get into their chat, you say, hey, handsome. I want everybody to say, hey, handsome. Nothing but hey, handsome. There we go. We'll go with that. He'll be like, what? What? And in, and in maintaining that, uh, keep, spread the reaper love, keep being awesome, guys. And uh, we will see you tomorrow morning for more in. Awesome. See you next week, guys. See you guys.